Hi, I am Dr. Sinjab. This is part 5 of the Concepts in Refractive Surgery course. In this part, I am going to discuss another common problem, that is, determination of the amount of hyperopia that should be treated by refractive surgery. I hope you will enjoy. Concepts in Refractive Surgery Part 5 Hyperopic Correction in hyperopic correction, we are facing a problem, which is determining the amount of hyperopia that should be treated. Actually, we have to determine and measure the manifest refraction, the cycloplegic refraction, and we have to consider the age of the patient. In general, after we measure the manifest refraction and cycloplegic refraction, we have to calculate the delta, which is the difference between the cycloplegic refraction and the manifest refraction. If delta is less than or equals to 1, then treat manifest refraction. Otherwise, you have to follow one of two routes. The first route is the gradual method, and the second route is the quick method. Actually, the gradual method is much more accurate, but it is more expensive, time-consuming, and many patients may disagree to go for it. The quick method is the most commonly used method in our daily practice. Let us start with the gradual method. In the gradual method, I prescribe the manifest refraction as a first step, then I increase the prescription by a quarter of delta every two to three months, until I reach the highest tolerable numbers. Let's have an example. Example number one. A patient has manifest refraction of plus 1.5. His cycloplegic refraction is plus 4. So delta is plus 2.5 and a quarter of delta is almost 0 0.75. So in this example, I will start my prescription by the manifest refraction plus 1.5 then I ask the patient to come after two to three months in order to increase the prescription by 0 0.75 to become plus 2.25 diopters and I ask the patient to come after two to three months and I ask him whether he was comfortable with this prescription or not most probably he will be comfortable because we are still far away from the cycloplegic refraction. So I can add another 0 0.75 diopter to his prescription to become 0 0.3 diopters. After two to three months, the patient should come again and I will repeat the question. If he is tolerant to plus three, I can add another 0 0.75 to become 3.75 to try it for another two to three months otherwise I will stop at three diopters and treat these three diopters let's have another example example number two a patient has manifest refraction plus two diopters his cycloplegic refraction is plus six diopters this case is not uncommon especially in young ages. Delta is plus 4 and a quarter of delta is plus 1. So I start with plus 2 diopters prescription. I ask the patient to come after 2 to 3 months to increase it by plus 1 and it becomes plus 3. The patient should come after 2 to 3 months and I may add another plus 1 and after two to three months, the patient should come and I ask him whether he was toler tolerant to the plus four or not. Most probably he will be tolerant because still we are far away from the cycloplegic refraction. So I can add another plus one. And after two to three months, the patient should come for the final increase. However, in any stage, when the patient says that 
I am not tolerable, then we can stop, stop at that number and treat it. Suppose when we reach the plus 5, he reached the highest number that he can tolerate, then we, we have to treat the plus 5. So as you see, the gradual method is much more expensive and time consuming, but actually it is scientific and much more accurate than the quick method. However, in our daily practice, usually we go to the quick method. The quick method depends on patient's age. When the patient is 20 to 30 years old, the rule says we have to correct the manifest refraction plus a third of delta. When the patient is 31 to 40 years old, we have to correct the manifest refraction plus half delta. When the patient is 41 to 50 years old, we have to correct the full cycloplegic refraction. And when the patient is above 50 years old, we have to correct the cycloplegic refraction plus 0.5 diopters. Let us have some examples. Example number one. A patient has manifest refraction of plus two diopters his cycloplegic refraction is plus 4 diopters, so delta will be plus 2. Patient's age is 34 years. So, we have to apply this rule, which is manifest refraction plus half of delta. So, we are going to correct plus 3 diopters. Another example. A patient has manifest refraction of plus 3 Cycloplegic refraction is plus 6, so delta is plus 3, and the patient is 24, 25 years old. So we have to apply this rule, which is manifest refraction plus a third of delta. In this case, we are going to correct plus 4 diopters. Another example, a patient has manifest refraction of plus 3 diopters. Cycloplegic refraction of plus 4 diopters, so delta is plus 1. Patient's age is 40, 42 years, so we are going to correct the full cycloplegic refraction plus 4. The last example is a patient who has manifest refraction of plus 4, cycloplegic refraction of plus 4, and this is very normal because in age like 52, usually there is no accommodation, so delta is zero, but I'm going to correct the cycloplegic refraction plus 0 0.5, so I'm going to correct plus 4.5 diopters. But what if we have astigmatism? Actually, we have to follow same rules and we have to use the manifest astigmatism, not the cycloplegic astigmatism. Let us have some examples. Example number one. A patient has manifest refraction plus one, sphere minus one, at 90, which is against the rule astigmatism. His cycloplegic refraction is plus three, sphere minus 1.5 at 80. So delta is plus 2. Delta is the difference between spheres, manifest spheres, and cycloplegic spheres. Patient's age is 21. So I'm going to correct plus 1.75 minus 1 at 90. As you see, I used the manifest astigmatism, the manifest amount of astigmatism, and the manifest excess of astigmatism. Example number two, another patient has manifest refraction plus two minus one at 45. His cycloplegic refraction is plus five minus two at 60. So delta is plus three. Patient's age is 28 years. So I'm going to correct plus three minus one at 45. So 
I've used minus one at 45, which is the manifest astigmatism. Another example, a patient has manifest refraction plus 3.5 minus 1.75 at 110. His cycloplegic refraction is plus 5.5 minus 225 at 90. Delta, which is the difference between spheres, is plus 2. Patient's age is 36 years. So I'm going to correct plus 4.5 minus 175 at 110. So in summary, measure manifest refraction and cycloplegic refraction and consider the age of the patient. If the difference is less than or equals to one, then treat manifest refraction. Otherwise, follow the gradual or the quick methods. And if there is astigmatism, use the manifest astigmatism. Thank you very much.